All right, I have not chosen to do this because I'm exceptionally qualified. Uh, I just haven't found this information online, and I have I have been looking for it for a while. And it just so happens that today in church, a uh, Canadian guy I know from Winnipeg actually had this um, booklet. Uh, binge drinking. It's uh, has an excerpt of John Flavel's works. It's not actually a book he wrote. And this is maybe. On the seventeenth century, um, my father was is a pastor, and he drank wine throughout my life, and was never drunk. I've never seen him drunk once. And I don't think he's ever actually been drunk, which gave the perfect um, example for me. And he always instructed me that it's not sin to drink wine, but to abuse it, just like food, sex, any other pleasure God has given, but has likewise regulated its use. Um, and I'm just to, to let you know that I'm informing others that this is a sin, not to run around accusing them, trying to dig them into a ditch. Um, rather, I believe that if you think that sin, this sin is actually just a harmless fun, um, you're walking in darkness, and you need to see the light. And I don't think I can do it, but the Holy Spirit can, and I believe can, He can use this uh, exceptional author in a way that, like anything I had to say, I just don't think I, what I can say at the moment would be as convincing. Likewise, not only do I want to help others, but this is a personal issue. Like, I myself have struggled with drunkenness, not in high school, not in college, but actually in seminary. Um, just life gets hard, and at other times, it's not hard at all, and you just want to, I guess, take your joy to the next level. Um, there's various reasons to fall into the temptation of drunkenness. It's not because you're necessarily desperate. It could be just because it's fun, and it's, but it's forbidden. Um, and so I say this for myself and to others to please repent and follow Christ um, because apart from Him there is no life. And, and likewise as well, um, I don't want to say the law without including the gospel that God promises to forgive the sins of any who are willing to turn from their sin and trust Christ as the payment for their sin, the sub, the sin bearer. Um, all, all the consequences of sin, um, not in this life necessarily, but definitely in the next. All judgment to your soul, to your body, will be totally taken care of at the resurrection. If you just repent now, you have that promise from God that you will be taken care of. Um, so there's good news. Um, repent and be saved.